Hello class, George here, and in this video we're going to look at something we've been ignoring for a while, and I'm sure you've noticed it, and that's whenever we decide to take our uh, device, tablet, or cell phone, and rotate it, your activity basically seems to completely reset. This happens because when we rotate our device, the device configuration is changing, and this prompts uh, Android to go ahead and basically destroy your activity and, and recreate it. So we end up going all the way through that entire life cycle that we saw last time through on create all the way to on destroy and we come back full cycle. Because of that, basically everything gets reinitialized back to whatever values you had originally in on create. But there is a way for us to keep data around when these changes happen. Um, there's several ways actually, and the one we're going to be looking at here is one of the simplest and easiest for us to implement, and that is by using that bundle object that we have in on create. So if you remember, onCreate passes in, as its first and only parameter, a bundle object. So far, we've just been passing that off to the uh, super method that we have in our class. Bundle has the capability of storing um, key value pairs. Basically, think of it like a dictionary, right? So we pass in strings over here as keys, and these strings are our unique identifiers that we have to create. And then we, of course, have the value we expect to get out of it. Now, the value can be any of the basic types inside of Java or it can be any object that's serializable. Now, serializable basically means that the class, like a special class, implements the, the serializable interface. Now, serializable is uh, an empty interface, completely empty, so there's actually no methods you're going to be filling in for this. In our first example, we're not going to be messing with any custom classes. We're just going to be uh, passing a value from, well, basically, the app is going to be very simple. It's just going to be a text view up here, and there's going to be a button. And at first, it's just going to say zero, and every time you click the button, it's going to increment this amount by one. Now, if we rotate the device, before we deal with, um, you know, storing those key value pairs or storing the, the number of clicks we've had, this is going to have our text, and then the text is just going to reset back to zero. What we're going to end up doing is saving this information in a special method, and that's our chance to store out information, usually smaller information that we know we want to persist if the device uh, configuration has changed, if there's a rotation. So what basically happens is, is our activity starts going through its, you know, destruction phases, and then it's we're going to get a chance to store away uh, this information. In this case, it's just going to be an integer value inside of this bundle. And then when our act activity is recreated, we get this bundle back in on create. And that gives us the ability then to find that value. And if it is there, use it to set up our activity. All right, enough talking. Let's jump on in and actually do something in Android Studio. So let's go to File, New, and let's create a new project. Uh, let's keep, I'm going to call this uh, Data Persist Test. Uh, target 17 is fine. Hit Next. And Empty Activity. Main activity is fine. All right, so here's our new app. Give it a few seconds to uh, refresh everything so that it can find all these different things. Um, let's go over to the main activity at the moment. And in the main activity, what we're going to want to do is change a few things. We're going to want to put that button in there. There we are. Uh, let's see, we have a relative layout. Let's just change that to a linear layout. Linear layout. Go back over here to design. Click on the layout. Let's do gravity in the center, just so everything's right there in the middle. And orientation will set to vertical. And let's grab a button and place it in that linear layout. Let's see, the button, let's just have it say, we're not going to mess with string resources at the moment, so let's just say, uh, press me. What we will need are references to these different objects, so they need to have IDs. By default, button will have an ID, and we'll just let it be button for now, because this app isn't going to get any more complicated than what you see here. Android colon ID at plus ID slash, and then we'll just call this text. Let's go over to the main activity now and open up our onCreate method. So here you can see bundle saved instant state. So hopefully now that information makes a little bit more sense to you. We have stored instance information about its state, and now it's our chance to extract that information if we want to. Now it's possible that there is no bundle, that this is actually a null object being passed in. So you do need to do a check first. Let's just do an if saved instant state does not equal null. And then we'll, we'll end up doing something shortly inside of there. But first, we need to make this something we can actually work with. So let's go ahead and create two private variables. We'll do a private button, button. And then we'll do a private text view, text. We're going to need to store our current count. So let's do private int count is equal to zero. 
now that we have these, and now that we've inflated our layout right here, the next thing for us to do is do a button is equal to find view by ID, r.id.button. And next up we want to do text is equal to find view by ID, r.id.text. Just give that a second, there we are. Uh, we gotta typecast these over, so let's do that next. So we'll do button and we'll do text view. So now that we have these, we're gonna to wanna to set the text up on that button, text.setText. .text. And our character sequence is gonna be easy. We're just gonna have it say, number of presses, colon, space, and then add to that, let's see, we'll do string dot value of, and we're going to put in there an integer value. So let's just do count. Let's create our callback for the button. So we'll do button dot set on click listener, new on click listener. We'll use an anonymous class in this case. And inside of here, and when this button gets clicked, we're gonna to wanna to increment count. So let's do count plus plus. And then after the, uh, the count is clicked, we're also gonna to wanna to update the text. So we can just grab that line and paste it right there. Or if you want to, you can make a function that calls uh, update text. So with this as it is, when we press the button, it's going to increment text and the value here, the, the uh, string is going to update as well. We are not storing any information at the moment. So we're gonna run into a problem where if we rotate the app, well, we're gonna lose all of our button presses. So let's go ahead and run this app. Run. There we are, let's hit run and connect to the Samsung device. All right, so here's our app. Let's go ahead and press it. We can see we have 10 presses. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my device. Well, we'll rotate it there, we'll rotate it again. And there we can see the activity was destroyed and uh, our number of presses is reset back to zero and we lost it again. So now let's talk about ways of actually retaining this information. So go ahead and minimize that. So while we can get information here and on create, we actually need to use a different method to uh, store that information away. Uh, the easiest way, because it's hard to remember every single method inside of Android, is we're gonna right click, go to generate or alt insert, and then go to override methods, which is control O. And we're going to just start typing. And what we're gonna type is on, save instance state, which is what we go to right here. We're gonna hit okay. Here you can see the uh, method, protected void on save instance state. Here's the bundle object we get passed, and that's where we're gonna store our key value pairs. So if we do out state dot put is the uh, start of the, all the different methods for putting information in there. For us, we're gonna be dealing with put int, but there's lots of different types, so I recommend you go through and check it out. Characters, arrays, sequences, floats, and uh, really importantly, uh, put serializable. That is, if you create your own classes that are serializable, you can put those class objects into this bundle and pass them around. And that's a great way if you have a large collection of data or information about a character or something else that you want to persist, that, that's one way of storing the information and bringing it from one side to the other. And we'll look at put serializable in just a few seconds after this app, uh, where I'll show off a pet application that we created in the physical version of this Android course. So let's just do put int. Put int is going to take a string and a key. So let's go ahead and give it a string. Now, we want this string to be the same thing always. So it's a good thing to create a public final static string, and we're just gonna call this tag underscore count. Now it's possible we might get bundle information from other activities, we might get, uh, we might extend what we pass in there, and we don't want our names to clash. So it's always a good idea to make this somewhat unique, and one way to do that is of course to start with your whole com name, uh, and then of course the name of the activity, and then whatever you actually want this to be for. In our case, it's the count. It's long, but it's unique, and that's kind of what's important here. Grab tag count, come down here. That's going to be our string that we can reference everywhere, and now we need to put the value, which is just count. And that's it, that's going to uh, push this information whenever on save instance state gets called. So when does this actually get called? Well, let, let's try to see when it happens. So let's right click here and go to generate again. And let's do overrides. And we're gonna want, uh, what is it? We'll do on, on pause and we'll also do on stop. Protected void on stop. And let's do another one here. So let's grab that, put that there. Hit control O to bring up the uh, different methods we can implement and override and do on destroy. And let's just do debug.log, whoops, wrong application, log.d. And we need that tag, of course, and then whatever we want to state. So let's just call this, what is this, main activity 
for our message, let's just say on pause. And of course, do the same for each of these, but change it to whatever that method happens to be. And then do one last one in here, on save instance state. Now that the data gets passed, we need to recover that data. So first we need to check to see whether or not bundle is null. There's a good chance there won't be a bundle brought in. So if you try to work with that bundle, you're just gonna crash your app. If we uh, are not equal to null, let's grab that value. So what we want is count equal to save instance state dot get this time, get int. And then we're just gonna pass in the key and that's our tag underscore count. Now, if you look, not only is there a string key, but there's also an int default value that we can pass in. And if you can't find that key, what would you like us to return? Well, I want you to return a value of zero because the idea is if you couldn't find it, then I must not have stored it. So I maybe I'm in some weird state where I'm at the beginning of our app. So let's just restart that count back to zero. All right, let's go ahead and hit run now. Here it is. Let's uh, keep pressing. Let's go ahead and do a rotate now. And as you can see, we've rotated and the number of presses is 24. So here we can see we have on pause and on save instance state was called. And we have on stop and on destroy. So there you can see exactly where our on save instance state got called right after on pause. And we can keep clicking this and we can rotate the device again. And you can see right here on pause, on save instance state, on stop, on destroy. And we still have the number of presses stored right there. That's an incredibly simple example. And I wanted to do that because I wanted a, a quick and easy video. So just to show you that this can work with more complicated stuff. So this is a project that we're doing in the physical version of this class, uh, where we, instead of creating the memory stuff, we ended up a simple my pet app where you choose a different pet, uh, you, mo you move through several different screens, and in each screen you have not only a pet that you end up creating with its own hit points, attack, and stamina, and so forth, which is this class you see right here, uh, private class pet, but you also have a mode. And both of these pieces of data need to be transferred back and forth across uh, rotations of the device. So in order to make pet work, I had to implement serializable, which has no special functionality. Uh, it just you know alerts people that this is something that can be serialized. Uh, we also have these different serializable values. So you'll notice I have a string, an int, all basic types that I know can be serialized. Same thing with mode. Mode is an enumeration and enumerations are serializable inside of Java. But you can't use a put enum. You actually have to uh, use the serializable and I'll show you that in just a second. So let's go, come on down and let's go to our on save instance state here. So if I have a pet because it's not null, Let's do an out state dot put serializable. There's my tag, just like the other example. And now I've passed in my pet object. That's just the class. Because it's serializable, it'll work here. Then we have our out state dot put serializable. And here I'm pushing in my enum or my current mode. I pass in the tag and I pass in the object and I'm done. Now up here, it's a little bit more complicated, but I need to check to see if my, my bundle is null or not. If it's not null, I pull out my, uh, my pet and my mode using the get serializable and using the proper tag. And then you, of course, have to typecast this over into the correct object because get serializable is just going to return to you a standard uh, Java object. So here we are, my pet hit start. Let's choose a roach and then let's uh, train that roach a bunch and increase its AP or attack points. Let's sleep, let's eat and sleep and train and eat and sleep and just get the numbers to be different. So my stamina is locked out and these buttons are become disabled whenever my stamina gets too low. Let's go ahead and rotate this device. And we can see that our sleep, eat and train is good. Now there is one little bug and that was the fact that the eat and train values were not deactivated. And that's just because apparently I was lazy and my refresh layout function needs to actually make sure that I disable those things. I think I only disable them in my on callback listeners here. Yeah, on my, on my click listeners. So anyway, that's one really simple example. And another example where I showed you me using it in a slightly more complicated way, using serializable class objects and enumerations. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. So long, bye.